Hello, Erank. Welcome to another Thursday Live with we have Starla, we have Anthony, and me, Pam. <laughs> this is your place to get in all your Erank related questions because we've got Anthony to, bu to bully. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. How are you, Pam? How are you, Starla? How's everyone in the interwebs? <laughs> Doing awesome. It looks like we've got, oh, where to go? We've got 19 on right now. So hopefully we actually get some good questions today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got back questions sure. last week? <laughs> um, oh, no, last week it was me and Brian. No, we had good questions last week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And we have some fun updates. I'm I'm assuming that all uh, 19, oh, we're up, no, never mind, we're at 19. All 19 of you have logged into E-Rank in the last week. It hasn't quite been a week yet. Um, and checked out the new interface. We'll be talking a little bit about that today. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure that you go log in and check it out and let us know what you think. I think it looks so much better. What do you guys think in the chat? Starla, mm -hmm. it, it's not a week, it's a day. It's it, That's only been a day. <laughs> a day? Yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> Has it only been a day? Starla works in the internet years, which is kind of like dog years. You know, it's like... <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, One saw, day. I saw the update come in through Slack, and I could have swore <laughs> that it came in on, like, Monday. Yeah, we, we, we teased it internally. Um, a little Got earlier it. to to let people know and, and test it out. Oh, so was, so maybe. Test it out. <laughs> yeah. But that's all good. Wow, we're getting a few people popping in comments at that, which is great. We've got Amanda, the produce aisle. I wonder what they sell. Um, Lisa, a pinch of cute. Emma, Esther. Oh gosh. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> Let's see can't find the notes area anymore for the competition listing. Okay, I can I can walk people through some of those changes so that uh, people are familiar with it. Yeah. Or reoriented, yeah. So, um, shall I dive in and people can just pile on questions and so forth, so. Yep, All right. your screen. Yes, please. <laughs> All righty. So, can you see it all right? Can most people see it all right? I know yeah. I'm on a monitor, it's pretty big, but hopefully it's reasonable. Do that. Okay. All right. So, um, the obvious change is we've got the navigation, which is now down the left hand side. So, um, I don't know if, if, how many of you were here about four or five years ago when we used to have the left nav. We changed it at the top. Uh, a lot of people loved it up there. A lot of people complained. We changed it back to the left. A lot of people love it. A lot of people complain. Um, but we put it back to the left because there's a very good reason for this. We were essentially running out of room up along the top here. So uh, as you know, we've got quite a few tools. And we need to rejig the menu so that it's a bit more intuitive and understandable. And we just were running out of room along the top. So if you have the logo and your menu items and a search box and a refresh button, we were running out of room. And if you had a small screen, it was even worse. So we've realigned it to the left. We're starting to get into more of a, a, a workflow or a, a function or a task line of thinking. So most of the items in here, you'll already be very familiar with. A couple moved around and a, a couple we renamed as well. But the old listings menu is now listing optimization. The old competition menu is now competitive research. The old shop menu is now shop insights. Trends is still trends. Tools is still tools, but it's a lot smaller now. Uh, and you'll notice that there's no keyword stuff in here anymore because keyword research has got its own menu. So we've brought that out. So it's a little more discoverable, especially for new users. Um, but the idea was, you know, if you're here to do some listing optimization, the functions are in there. If you're doing competitive research, the, the functions are in there. So we, we, we're doing that. Um, we also um, have got a dedicated link now. So if, if you've heard about our Sidekick or browser extension, you can click on that. And you can install it into uh, Chrome and, and Brave and a couple of other browsers now. So uh, you're welcome to do that. Settings is a little bit more exposed than it used to be. But what I think... Uh, is interesting 
it was a conversation which came up a few months ago was um, uh, really stemmed around here, switching between your shops and, and borrowing ideas from interfaces that Etsy sellers are already familiar with. So we took this from Etsy itself. So instead of trying to reinvent and place things in unusual locations, we, we started to put them in areas where you may be familiar with. So you can connect the shop in here, you can log out from here, you can switch between any shops that you've got connected to your account like so. Um, and you can collapse it down. So if you're looking for a little bit more room, uh, you can do that if you like a bit of a minimalist sort of approach. Me, I kind of like to see it all out there in front of me. I just find it a bit easier to, to get the stuff quickly by having it exposed like so. So that's just me. Any questions popping in so far around uh, what I've just said there? Uh, Nothing start. that you've said so far. Um... Cool. Cool. So that's the, the first bit. Now, for those of you who like to pop into your active listings and check out some listing audits and things like that, um, we have, in my opinion, finally and long overdue, renamed active listings to listing audits. So all your listing audits now belong in there. And this was really to help new users out because a lot of people would hear about uh, E-Rank's listing audits and you can go in there and get tips on how to improve your listing. And you go through the old menu and there's no listing audit to be seen anywhere. So there was a little bit of confusion for new members. We wanted to make sure that uh, we did things in a better way, especially when, you know, maybe you're just starting to sell out, sell on Etsy and you're learning about tools that can help you and, you know, you're, you're facing that really steep learning curve. So we're starting to rename a few things. It didn't get taken away. It's still in there. You can pop in, uh, click on that. It'll load up in a second here. Um, and you will see the active listings report as it's been for a little while now. Um, we have increased some functionality on some of the tables and screens like this. So you'll start to see buttons up here like columns. So I can go in here and I can go, right, I just want to show information that's important to me. So if I want to keep a close eye on maybe um, uh, the number of SEO tips that E-Rank has for my shop. I want to tick that column in there. Uh, maybe I'm not too interested in when a listing expires, but I'm interested in visibility score. Um, and that might be a good mix. For me, that is stuff I'm interested in. So I'll apply that and the screen will update and it'll now see uh, show me the, the SEO tips and visibility score for each listing. So that's something uh, we're starting to, to roll out to different tools. I think we started first with the keyword tool. We added it into the listing audit screen now. Uh, and we've also added it into the com competitor sales. So I'm going to pop into here now and show you what I mean by that. We did have a uh, question uh, uh -huh. about, comp I was waiting until you got to the competition tab. She said, is there yep. a reason for the blank space on the competition tab on either side of the data, it makes it challenging to see everything on one page. Now you have to scroll. Yeah, so there is a method behind the madness, but I'm, I think we need to improve it. So the, the rationale is that when you have a web page that stretches out, like I've got a big honking monitor and I'll just sort of resize it. This is what uh, the person's talking about here, the, the space on either side here. Mm -hmm. Um, on some screens, having the content stretch right out makes the site look really weird. Um, so we put in a constraint in there just so that if you've got a, um, a bigger monitor, it doesn't look too weird. However, in some cases, you need that extra room. So we're having some discussions internally to give you a little switch. We'll probably put something up in the corner here, which allows you to switch between that sort of nicely contained mode and a more fluid mode, which will just adjust to the width of your monitor. So um, it's a bit of a trade-off. We're trying to make parts look a bit more grown up and professional. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to sacrifice um, things like the amount of information we get onto the screen. So uh, look out for an update, maybe give us about a week um, and it should give you that option where you can actually see more space. If, if there's white space, we'll use it better. Um, kind of like what we were doing before. Um, so in here, same sort of deal. We've added the columns button in here. So uh, yesterday we, we took the uh, 
made a little bit of a mistake here, I think. We removed a couple of columns and just thought, okay, well, everyone will like this, so we'll put it out there like that. Hmm, what do we know, right? <laughs> People have different preferences. So for me uh, and for everyone today, if you were to go in there, you'll see basically everything is enabled. But uh, there may be cases where you don't need to see those daily trends. Maybe you're looking a little more big picture. You just want to know the 7 and 30 day in total uh, sales that a shop's got or had. Uh, maybe you're not so interested in the active listing or the shop age. Um, maybe you don't use the graphing capability. So I might just turn that off and I'll apply that. And what happens is we end up with a, a screen that's much less uh, cluttered. So um, again, you can um, change that, add or remove from those columns to suit your, uh, your own personal preferences. So um, that's available for everyone now. Uh, I think that was about all I, I wanted to, to share in there. Um, some people, uh, this one's a bit polarizing. There is a graphing capability for those who don't know um, where you can track um, a shop's sales over the past 30 days. It can be very handy. Um, some people just don't like seeing that. Other people love it. So uh, it's there. Um, by default, it will be hidden for most of you. Um, but you can click on that. Uh, if you really like it and you want to graph some different shops, then you can go into here and you can start ticking boxes and you'll see they will be added into um, the graphing sec section here. So um, with that said, um, this isn't the end of the changes. We've got a roadmap over the next six to nine months where we're continuing to make changes. And I know a lot of people may be going, oh, please, Anthony, don't change things. But the reality is um, it's overdue. We, we've held on to the design for the most part for um, in some areas almost eight years, and that's too long. Uh, things change, Etsy changes, tools get better, technology gets better, so we're working on that. Um, my point here is if you're popping in and you're seeing something and you go, hmm, okay, it's kind of nice, but, gee, I really wish, let us know. I think I've said this every time I get onto a QA, and a let us know, give us the feedback, let us know what you think, good, bad, or ugly. Um, if we're missing the target, uh, we need to hear about it. Um, if you hate it all, that feedback doesn't help us. But if you give us specifics, we can go, ah, okay, we have a problem here, those spaces down the side. Once we know something specific, we can go in there and, and tackle it. So um, that's what we're doing. Uh, we build this for you, so um, let us know your thoughts in there and, you know, constructive criticism uh, is very, very welcome. Yeah, they get uh, those comments. I mean, even we had one from the Facebook group, a, a really mm. great uh, piece of feedback, but, you know, a team member, if somebody sees one of those pieces of feedback, it gets, you know, screenshot and shared yep. where the team can see it. Uh, I, I get those notifications on my phone where somebody will say, oh, so-and-so had a great idea. So you know, it's not falling on deaf ears. Definitely no. let us know if you have those suggestions. You can hit that little support button in the bottom right corner. You can kind of see it on Anthony's screen there. Um, or you can post it in our Facebook group if you happen to be over there. It's also linked down below. Um, mm -hmm. Or you can just email us directly at support at erank.com if you prefer that method. There's three ways to get a hold of us. Yep, yep. Uh, we don't hide. <laughs> we don't hide behind no reply emails and all that sort of stuff. We're now, uh, Fruitanical Wares had said, uh, I was using it last night and it was really slow. Is this possibly just a growing pain or does the site now require a bit more bandwidth for optimal use? Um, so there's there's not a single answer I can give there. Um, <laughs> depends on a couple of things. So, for instance, um, a lot of information we have to get in real time from Etsy. And so, for example, if you're in the uh, competitor sales page like this one here, you'll notice it takes a little while for some of the content to load. That's because we're getting that from Etsy. We're waiting on them to give us the information. Uh, there are other parts of the site where it's coming, say, directly from our database. So that can be responding in a couple of milliseconds. Uh, and then there are some things with the, the technology that we're using um, where it just doesn't feel fast in the browser. So. It could be a mixture of the, those three sorts of things that are going on. Uh, that said, uh, 
if it's going abnormally slow, again, hit the feedback button and let us know. Uh, we can certainly investigate that. We, we log a lot of things here so we can see whether Etsy's being slow. Uh, there have been times in the past when our database can be slow, uh, but we've uh, substantially improved the performance of that. So generally it's not that. Um, but yeah, let us know uh, if there's a specific tool that would really help us pinpoint where it is. And hopefully it's just a temporary sort of thing, but if it's not, it may be affecting other people as well. So just sharing that with us uh, in a little bit more detail about where it is and what's happening uh, can help us help you and other people that may be affected. Perfect. And then uh, Kelly had asked, is there a way to move the tag columns within the draft slash audit section so that I can see my choice of information, start of title in, uh, in description rather than having to scroll across? Uh, yes, so that's in the listing order, I believe. Um, so let me pop into there. We have got this feedback from several people. Uh, I was pretty upset <laughs> seeing that in there because we, quite frankly, we just overlooked that area there. It's a bit embarrassing to be honest. Um, so this is the area of concern here. So um, what we've got is a bit of a horizontal scroll bar, which I'm not too happy with. From a user experience point of view, it kind of sucks. Um, so we'll be doing a couple of things here. We'll be figuring out a way to tighten up the information here so there's less need to do the horizontal scroll. We'll be adding uh, the column button up here as well. So there may be some information here which you just don't care about. So for example, we may not need to know the, the tag number, for example. It doesn't really shed a lot of information. Um, you may not be interested in the search trend because you slice and dice your tags in a, in a certain way which makes it kind of uh, less useful. Um, so. We'll look at a couple of ways there. And then, of course, uh, as one of the members uh, said earlier, we'll look at using the, the space on the left and right a little bit better so we minimize the amount of horizontal scrolling that goes on. So that's exactly the sort of feedback we need to know. If there's a little area in there where it's kind of irking you, um, then let us know. We'll get onto it. Awesome. Well, that was all of the questions for the chat for now. You guys are, are free to put your questions into the chat. However, Jessica did find three questions from last week that didn't get answered. Um, maybe to fill some time while we're waiting for those, if we want to yeah. answer those. Um, yeah. Let's see, she submitted these over on Facebook. The first one was, should I be trying to use almost all of the keyword phrases from my titles in my description or just the superstar few? Okay, um, so I, I do want to mention that Etsy is a little bit, they don't really give us great guidance on descriptions within the ultimate guide to search. However, their head of search, um, Andrew Stanton, during the Etsy up event, not, I think it was last March, he actually confirmed that our descriptions are not utilized for query matching. Um, they're not used for the key, uh, keyword matching phase. Instead, he said that they're used more to determine if the specific customer who is um, who is you know making the search if they have an affinity for a specific style or you know maybe a particular color. Um, that was the example that he utilized. So what I kind of gleaned from this is that um, I speculate that Etsy is more using our descriptions for that layer of personalization. And it's almost the unspoken things that aren't mentioned within our titles and tags, but that maybe Etsy has noticed through their personalization feature that they use that follows each shopper, where maybe if they notice that Betty buys lots of blue items and you haven't mentioned anywhere in your tags and titles that your product has blue, but maybe you have blue somewhere in your description. Even if Betty didn't specify that she was looking for blue wall art, maybe it, it's uh, going to be more likely that if you have matched, you know, that your products are a blue style. Um, I, I think that, you know, the old strategy of take your whole Etsy, you know, listing title, paste that down in your description. Th those days are long gone. We don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. That, that never really was, you know, applicable anyway. Um, but just make sure that you're accurately describing your item. And since he's 
specifically talked about things like style. If you know that your product has a specific style, like minimalist or, you know, uh, cottage core or whatever it may be, I would try to get really specific on those additional details. And I mean, still be keyword minded. Um, if you're selling a blue cat mug, obviously say this blue cat mug is a great gift for any lover of our furry friends. I don't know. Um, but don't worry so much about like getting all of those keywords from your title down in your description. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm still a firm believer of writing a description that is human friendly. Don't focus on, you know, pleasing the Etsy or Google bots. Keep it human friendly. It, to me, it, it, and I, I say this often, your picture is the, the main thing that drags you, drags a buyer in, but it's coupled with the keywords you choose and the title and the tags. You go through the pictures and then at the end, if you're like me, you're going, mm, OK, I just want to make sure that I'm actually buying what I see here. And so I go into the description and read that very closely. If I start seeing gibberish in there, if I start seeing um, word salad, where it's just the title and tags going over again, I'm not seeing a lot of effort to reassure me and give me confidence that I'm buying something. Yeah. And lastly, and a bit unrelated, but if I see terms and conditions that are really scary, like I've got to return it within 24 hours or something like that, it turns me off. So um, really focus on writing a good human friendly description. Yeah, I always think with the the terms and conditions, well, it's not quite, but there's a cafe in Glasgow that always puts me off because the little sign outside always said, um, hygiene guaranteed. And you're like, you have to mention that. I don't want to go in there. They mentioned <laughs> so, it for a reason, right? <laughs> yeah. Having a big yeah. billboard outside your shop that says, we have yeah. no bugs. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, the other part of that question was, what's the sweet spot for the amount of listings? Is it 100? You have to have at least one listing. That's, yeah, that's the most <laughs> <laughs> One good listing is all it takes. Yeah. I, I don't know whether you've had this conversation with other people, but I've seen many stores and some that are really, really successful with 10, 20, 30,000 sales or more. And they've really got a handful of listings that are their hero listings that are doing really well. So you don't need all those other listings. But I can tell you what, when you have a quiet day when they're not selling, it's nice to have a couple of random ones uh, selling. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of Etsy YouTubers right now who are promoting like how to list 100 items a day. You know, you must do. And it's there's there's no strategy behind that other than throwing spaghetti at the wall. And I promise but, you, someday you'll run out of spaghetti. <laughs> but don't you feel like it's just polluting Etsy, if you can create that many listings a day. Um, yeah. and apologies to anyone that's in the print on demand space, because I know you can. <laughs> it's where's easier. the love? Where's the passion? Where's the love mm. in making a hundred things? Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's a, a magical number uh, other than at least one. Yeah. Now, Pam, there was one more part uh, in there in the middle. Um, somebody had said, I've heard some people talking about uh, to use or not use long tail keywords. How can I know what's best? Long tail keywords are the are what your customers are typing into the Etsy search bar. They don't know what they want if they are just searching for gift or mug or necklace. Um, you're probably already using long tail keywords uh, and you're just not recognizing that that's what they are. Any word that, you know, combination of words that accurately describes what your product is with a bit of detail is a long tail keyword. If you are, you know, it, mug is not a long tail keyword. Gray tabby cat mug is a long tail keyword. So as long as you're describing your product accurately and you're doing that keyword research, you should absolutely be using long tail keywords because there's more purchase intent there. People who are searching for a very specific type of item are ready to buy a very specific type of item. Yeah, and with a long tail keyword, that example that Starla just gave you, almost nested into it, you have these more broad keywords. Yeah. If, you know, you don't have to optimize for mug because your item is a mug and you're saying it in the long tail keyword. Um, but the only way you know what's best with keywords is by experimenting, by putting them up in a listing and seeing what works for you. Our keyword tools are there to help you to find what customers are searching for so you could say yeah that's relevant for the kind of things that i can make and then you create a listing that's your experiment to see what customers think of it so that every shop every listing 
every every country, <laughs> everything is slightly different for what works. Um, let's see, back to our YouTube chat, Self Loom had said, uh, when selecting the keywords for tags, is there a best practice on how many long tail versus non long tail keywords uh, we should be using for the long tail one? Should we use the ones that are popping recently? Um, yeah, so like Pam just said, keywords are nested within other keywords. So gray tabby cat mug, that's probably too long for a tag, but we'll just pretend that it fits. If, if your keyword is gray tabby cat mug, you're going to be hitting cat, cat mug, gray cat mug, tabby cat mug, and gray tabby cat mug. Etsy's gonna read those keywords in every possible combination as well as how they're written. Um, so, Yes, as many long tail keywords as possible. Um, and if they are trending recently, even better. That's not to guarantee that they're going to do well, but they're certainly something you're going to want to experiment with and keep an eye on. Yeah, and there's kind of no best practice because Etsy's not marking you up on it and going, oh, that shop has 13 long tail keywords. We're going to rank them better. It looks at each specific keyword. So it's like, does that shop have gray tabby cat mug somewhere in, in its title and tags? It does. It might be relevant for that. You know, it, it doesn't care if you also had great gift for mother in it because that's irrelevant for what the person's searching for. So there's no right and wrong amount, but you've got 13 tags, you might as well use them. Um, over on Facebook, uh, two things. Susie had said, hi team, not related to this conversation, but I popped an issue in the Facebook group. If you have time, could you give some feedback? Um, I'm sure someone will get back with you. We might not do it during the, the live stream, um, but I'm sure that you know, you'll, you'll hear from somebody. Um, and then Lisa, this is a million dollar question. She said, I've recently heard of Etsy hunt. Is that part of E-Rank? And if so, how is it used and how can I get access to it? <laughs> uh, I would be extremely careful about that business. Um, it's not us. Let's. It's definitely not us. They have been stealing some of our designs um, we, we used to be known as Etsy rank back in the day. Uh, they're using the phrase Etsy rank to try and borrow traffic and so forth. Um, I can't figure out who they are, where they're based, um, what they're, you know, what they're doing with people's data, stuff like that. They're, they're even doing things which make me question whether they're actually using Etsy's API. And if they are using Etsy's API, I think they're, in breach, um, the basically in a word, sketchy. Um, <laughs> stay away. Yeah, I've um, I've heard a lot of the of the same thing. I've I've seen yeah. people mention that yeah. it looks like us, and <laughs> that's not yeah. good. I mean, they borrowed like borrowed B some borrowed. stolen our design, like from some of the keyword tool stuff. Yeah, uh, our brand and so forth. Uh, and like I said, I, I don't know who the heck they are, um, but they uh, will be hearing about them in the news one day, I think. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see. Um, we have two questions from DBNV. Uh, is there a certain time of day to add new listings? Well, they can't sell if they're not listed. So <laughs> my, my favorite time of day is as soon as possible. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, and I'm sort of, pulling at threads here in the seller's handbook, um, Etsy have told us there is a little boost for new listings. So theoretically, if you were to list at the peak time when most people are visiting Etsy, then I guess there is mathematically a slightly better chance for you to get a sale then. So I would avoid times like, I mean, if your target market is the USA, probably don't need to list at 3 a.m. Um, but you may have some success um, listing around about 9 p.m. if people, you know, have put the kidlings to bed and had dinner and so forth and they're just goofing off on, on the internet, maybe that's a good time there. Yeah. But I, I think as a strategy that's going to make you millions of dollars, no, I don't think it's going to make <laughs> a big difference here. Yeah, I think if you're getting hundreds of sales a day 
it might make a difference. But if you're getting a sale a month, it's mm. probably not going to be a massive diff. It's not something to worry about too much. Yeah, yeah. Unless you've got some good external marketing. Um, you know, when I had the massive email list and the the top one percent jewelry shop, when I listed something new, it would sell immediately. But it wasn't because mm -hmm. of Etsy search. It was because I had an email list and people who were just waiting and refreshing to buy. If mm -hmm. you, I mean, how many of you list a new item and then it sell, sells the same day? Probably not very many. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be nice if that was the way out? Huh? Oh, right. You know, I think it might. Um, I'll ask this. Do you think it would be interesting if I like did some analysis to figure out what is the peak time? Yeah, maybe like will you make could you make like could you rank have a heat map for users? I know a lot yeah, of sites yeah. use I mean, it, it have it one. Won't be complete data, but it'll be massive sample size, so statistically significant. Yeah. Um I could probably do something for uh uh like peak times in USA, peak times in, in, in Germany, um, Italy, other you know countries where Etsy is popular. I can do that, and yeah, I think it'll, I think it'll be a fun, interesting exercise. Cool, yeah, yeah. definitely be fun to see. And, and maybe you can use it if, if you feel like there is something there to list at a certain time. Um, I, I think it's still very interesting to see when people are buying. And then they had a little bit more. They had uh, also added, does it matter how frequently we add new listings? Am I penalized if I add one on Monday, 10 on Friday, two on Sunday, for example? Um, no. no. I, I've not read anything anywhere that says you have to list every, you know, so many days or something like that. I have been in conversations with developers like back in my good old Microsoft days where we would look for, I guess the online equivalent of dusty shelves and signs of neglect and things like that. So uh, if Etsy had had similar conversations, and I'm getting into the speculation area here, which I'm, you know, how I feel about speculation, um, there, there could be um, some benefit to listing at least a couple of times a year, <laughs> um, you know, at least to show that there is some passion, so that there, there is some care about your shop. I think that I, as a, you know, if I was the web developer powering Etsy, I'd be saying, well, if this shop has seen no dusting or polishing in a year, I'd probably want to promote that other shop, which is being well maintained. So um, that's speculation, nothing official we've ever heard from Etsy uh, along those lines, but that's, that's how I would do it if I was programming uh, their ranking algorithm. But on the other side, a, a myth that people often spout is, you need to do something in your shop every single day. And I've never seen or heard anything to say that that's a necessity either. I mean, I've seen people, they'll like change their banner or they'll change a word in their announcement to be seen mm -hmm. to be busy every day. And that's kind of a waste of your time. Probably busy, like busy sort of work. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, oh, chew on that one as well. I wonder if there's <laughs> some data we can get from the Etsy API. Yeah which may show some correlation between activity and and sales. I mean, uh, it's a hard one. Etsy has said in the past um, that, um, I don't know exactly how they've worded it, but they have said that there is a there is benefit to being active within your shop. And a lot of people ask, like, what do they mean by being active? What do they, and it's not really defined. And I take that more mm -hmm. as don't set up a shop and abandon it. You mm -hmm. know, make sure that you're yeah. in there, you know, at least, you know, once a week being a business owner, making sure that things are up to date. If, if you're yeah. doing your SEO, listing products, you know, experimenting, taking better photos, updating your shop announcement when you need to, um, I, I dare say that that is more what they mean. Don't just list a bunch of stuff and then never come back. Yeah. The only thing I think of, I'm just seeing that where he's saying add 10 on Friday. If sometimes you'll get, when you list something, some of your followers will get a notification and they'll come and see this is often how a lot of us get sales when we list on the same day. So I don't know how many notifications Etsy would give out, but it's certainly isn't going to give out 10 of the same shop. So that's potentially 
somewhere where you might not get noticed. But at the same time, if you had a huge following, as the Stella talks about when she had her big mailing list and everything, if she said, on Friday, I am listing these 10 and when they're sold, they're sold, then that would be a very good thing. <laughs> so, yeah. Not from Eatsy algorithm, just from everyone going, ah, we've got to go and buy these because they're the only 10 in the world. Yeah. Um, Irene had said it'd be awesome if we could favor a shop to get notified when they add a new listing. That might be a little, that might never be a little, you yeah. never do it. Never, never, no. Kidding, kidding. I think it's an awesome idea. I don't know. And I, we may be doing something like that. I'm, I'm on the fence of like, I don't want my competitors to know right when I list something new. So from the seller perspective, I'm like, mm. Mm. I know it, it, it's, it's, it's a fine line. Um, Etsy make the data public. As a seller, you can go into your competitor store and you know pretty quickly figure it out as well just by looking at the site. It's a nuisance. Um, so you know we've held off on doing it for that reason. There's other things which we held off on doing for a long time as well because we wanted to see how people reacted to it. But I think if you're trying to learn from the best and they're doing a really good job, there can be some really good intelligence that you can gather and then apply to your own shop there. So I think the benefits uh, can be good for a lot of people here. Yeah. Amanda had said, mm -hmm. your, uh, Starla, your competitors can already see tons about your shop. Oh, I, I understand that. I <laughs> Yeah. I work here. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> what I'm saying is that I, I don't know how I feel about them getting a notification the moment that I upload a brand new listing. Yeah, um, I don't think we would get to the point where it's the moment you list something. Exactly. It may be, I mean, again, how often do you want to notify people? It gets pretty annoying very fast, right? So it may be something we do once a day or once a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It could be interesting, but I think as well, we have to think about like all of us how we're going to use that data because yeah. the last thing we want is go oh they've listed something i'm just absolutely going to copy it and it'll do you no good so. well yeah exactly and, and the, the listing is unproven so i mean you can infer that there is something here especially if this shop has you know got their act together that oh well they know something maybe i should follow suit but it's not a guarantee yeah um Let's see, uh, DBNV uh, was talking about the sidekick. They said, I'm obsessed. You guys did great with it. Is it oh, sometimes slow uh, due to getting mm. info from Etsy? It can lag at times. Yep. Yeah, we're aware of that. Uh, we have been sort of playing a little bit of a whack-a-mole sort of game here. So we see different areas which are slow. So we try and figure out, is there anything we can do to get it faster from Etsy? Is there something we can cache locally and store it without giving you information that's too old? Can we find a good balance there? So we are working on that. There are some areas that I find infuriatingly slow, but that's because I know we can make it faster. So uh, bear with us. But again, like I said earlier, if there's something specific that's slow and is bugging the, the heck out of you, send us a little note. It'll give us an idea of where we've got to focus. And don't wait for other people to, to send us a note. If we get a note from 10 people that, hey, a certain area is slow, we'll prioritize it. You know, it's, it's triage. If we see a lot of people having a problem, we'll give that a priority. So do let us know, please. Yeah, for everyone who hasn't noticed yet, what is Sidekick, Anthony? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suppose that's a segue into a, a, a quick demo again. I guess so. Um, you're not showing anything bad on your screen, so. Oh, I'll close it. <laughs> okay, bear with me. I've got to log in here, I think. And I've got a million accounts, like the queen has birthdays. Let's not show Anthony's logins. <laughs> this is creation while you're pulling that up. Um, had said, I love the new navigation changes. Just curious why the toolbar also remains across the top of the screen for keyword list, keyword tool spotted on Etsy. Uh, Etc. Yep. They're very popular tools. Um, um, yeah, it's interesting. I was chatting to one of the guys, and they said the uh, number of people clicking on this has dropped quite dramatically now that we introduced the left yeah. mouse. So yeah. that's kind of interesting. Um, I I have a love hate relationship with it. I love the convenience. I'm I'm habitually clicking on the the keyword tool. Um, that's just me and the tasks page. But 
this is a list of buttons that I put together. You know, I think I think I consulted both you and uh, you, Pam, and you, Stahla, when we we're looking at the, the list that we put in here. But that's like a survey of three people that dictated what those buttons are. So some people, you may want a shortcut button to listing audit. For other people, you might be like, just get this out of the screen. It's just confusing. It's just an extra layer of navigation. So um, no, I, but I was going to say there. Hmm? I don't. I just realised I don't use it at all. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's like some people are left-handed, some people are right-handed. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, so it, it may have a limited life. Um, I've seen some other sites which have a way of allowing you to favourite uh, some tools and stick it into the left nav, like with a little pin. So we may do something like that. Uh, we'll see. We're continuously experimenting there, believe it or not. Okay, so this here is the sidekick on the side here, hence why we call it the sidekick. Um, basically, uh, when you've enabled it and oh, installed it and you're on Etsy, it'll turn orange, which means we can show you information on that site. Um, you can click on it to make it disappear or come back again. Uh, and depending on the screen that you're looking at, the content will change. So if I'm on the dash, uh, the Etsy homepage, what we pop in here are a list of the most popular keywords we're seeing on Etsy over the past 30 days. So if that's useful for you guys, great. Um, if you've got suggestions, we're all ears. We'd love to hear more about it and recommend you hit the feedback button there and just say, hey, can you do something like this? Perhaps you're in the UK or Australia and you would rather see what's trending in those countries. Let us know. Um, but getting into more specifics, if I was to say pick on, well, I'll do a search. Um, so I'll search my old favorite slime. And so you'll see a bunch of listings come up. And what you'll see in here is some stats that start to appear. So you'll see the average number of searches each month. You can see the, uh, the click-through rate and things like that to give you an idea of how many listings or how often people are clicking on the listings. Um, I see like 140 plus percent here. That's great. That tells me people are not only clicking on one listing every time they see a search results page for slime, they're clicking on more than one on average. So that tells me this is a really good uh, keyword. If I'm selling slime, then maybe I want to put that in there. I mean, slime's pretty broad, but hopefully you get the point. Um, it'll show you the trend over time uh, and what countries people are living in who are searching for the, that same keyword on Etsy. We also do some analysis on those listings as well. So you can see uh, some information that's hidden uh, from users of Etsy. So you can go in here, you can see how many views each listing's had. Uh, we try to estimate the number of sales that listings had. It's based on public data, so it's not perfect, um, but it gives you an idea of which listings are more likely to sell. So you can take that information and use it as you see fit. Um, you also see the tags in there as well, which is very hard information to, to, to gather from uh, just looking at a listing nowadays. So you can take those tags, you can copy them into your clipboard, pop into your shop manager, paste them into a listing, maybe tweak them a little bit and so on. Um, we also do some basic sort of trend uh, tag analysis in here as well. So it'll give you an idea of what the most popular tags are for these listings uh, that you see on the screen here. So that's kind of neat if you're going, wow, how are these guys on page one? What are they doing here? You go, whoa, butter slime. Yeah, I can make that. I better get that in my listings. Um, cloud slime, whatever it is. So you can get ideas based on that. Now, if I was to go into the next layer here, which is looking at a specific listing, it'll pull back statistics for that listing. So you'll get an idea of the number of sales that this listing has. And again, I'll emphasize, estimated. It's not perfect. We're not ripping off this person's private data. We're looking at the public data that Etsy give us and we try uh, and apply some formulas there to give you an idea of whether this listing is selling well or not. We then look at the, the revenue, which is basically estimated sales multiplied by the price. So you can get an idea of, is this thing making money? Uh, what else can I tell you? The number of views. Um, how old the listing is, uh, even the quantity available, which can be kind of neat. If you're habitually looking at a listing and you see the quantity dropping each day, well, that tells me it's selling pretty regularly. So you may want to um, revisit some listings each day and just make a little note of how many are available. Uh, again, tag analysis. So it's kind of neat. I, I like that for you know just doing a little bit of research, trying to figure out which 
uh, listings are doing well. And then the last thing here, what I've done is I've popped into this store um, to see if I can uncover some more statistics about that store. So uh, you can see they've had 85,000 sales, so they've really done a, a, an amazing job uh, getting that far. Uh, they've got a pretty high rank in terms of all shops on Etsy. So globally, they're at 2,341. That's like right up in the upper 0.1% uh, and doing great as well in the US. Um, one thing that I find really interesting, though, is looking at the history. So the sidekick uncovers this for you. So you can just sort of do this as you're browsing around in Etsy. Uh, you can see they've had a pretty slow day, one sale, although some people may uh, say that one sale a day is pretty good. Um, but relative to their history, you, you can see here that last year they were doing an amazing job. Um, so it's, uh, it's kind of got pretty quiet for this store. So maybe, maybe they're going through some challenges. Maybe they need to refresh their, their store a little bit, something like that. This may not necessarily be a store that you can get a lot of, uh, great ideas from. I, I would be really looking for someone that's, uh, growing continuously or someone that is has a history of doing really well at this time of the year. So I'd probably go back to the same time last year and go, well, what did they do right there? So that's that bit. Uh, I'll show you one more thing. Um, so I'll pop into the shop manager. Um, if I go into my listings and I will pick on uh, the world famous E-Rank t-shirt here, um, <laughs> which has sold, I think, once to someone. Um, I can go in here and go, well, kind of title's a bit bland. I'm going to see if I can rejig this. So I can paste this into the AI um, uh, tool that we've got here, and it'll come back with some different tag ideas as well as descriptions. Um, and I've got a little bit of a bug here with the tags at the moment, so I'm not sure why that's not working. But it will give you tag ideas when it's working uh, correctly there. So that's the sidekick in five minutes. Can you, uh, real quick, can you show where in E-Rank? We have multiple pe people asking um, where to get it. Um, okay. Is there a, a link that shows how to set it up? Um, yep. Okay. So right here uh, in the navigation extension, I don't know whether we should call it sidekick or extension here, but it's extension. That links straight over to the Chrome Web Store. So if you've got Brave or Chrome, it should work pretty seamlessly now and flawlessly. I haven't tested Edge for a couple of weeks. It was starting to work partially on Edge um, and maybe other Chromium browsers as well. Um, but you would go into here. Uh, I'll remove it quickly and then reinstall it so you can see what I am doing. Okay. So I would do this. I go to the page. I would click on Add to Brave. It'll tell me that the E-Rank Sidekick can read and change data on all E-Rank sites and all Etsy.com sites. So um, it's kind of scary. We don't actually change the content on the site, but we can't turn that off either. So um, you know, we're honest. We're not going to do anything malicious here. <laughs> that I can guarantee you. Um, so now it has been installed. What you want to do um, is pop into the little extensions icon and pin it so you can see it all the time. Now that's it ready to go. So if I click on that, you'll see something like this, which is just a couple of shortcut buttons to different parts of the site. But that's it essentially installed. Um, whenever you're on an Etsy page, you will see that. Uh, and that tells you that we are uh, able to show you some sort of information or we can do something on the Etsy site. Uh, doesn't work on Amazon or other places like that at this stage. But we'll give it some thought. Does that help answer the question, Sala? I think so. Um, we have probably about 20 questions uh, in 10 okay. minutes. So, so um, I can try to power through as many as possible. I have to leave like right when Mark gets home, but if you guys mm -hmm. want to stay for a few more minutes and get the rest of them. Um, yep, we'll do that. All right, Ruth Marie had said, suggestion, I'm in my 50s and now need glasses in your keyword research. The gray background, white lettering are not easy to read. Mm, Making the gray okay. just a shade darker would help. Okay, we'll take that on board, yeah. Okay, 
Um, Jennifer, I'm assuming this is a question. They're kind of compiled or they're in different comments here. Let's see. I have very few items in my shop and I'm testing a few things, but when or whatever is going on now, I'm not getting seen even with uh, high ads on. These are not rubbish listings, so it's confusing. Listings getting as many favorites as views and showing to be on page one and two. So when it shows I was found for gemstone earrings, is that all used to find it via Etsy? Because that's a very broad term. So I'm assuming you mean your ads that you were found from mm. your ads for that term or your um, traffic stats. I need a bit more information. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. DBNV had said, will E-Rank ever have the option to show a shop's age in years and months rather than days? You know what? Someone asked me that yesterday. Was that you, Pam? That was Brian. I remember. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your squint, they look the same, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> offensive to Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm going to be in so much trouble now. Sorry, Pam. <laughs> um, I think it's a great idea. Uh, I, I was looking at this when Brian raised it. I'm, I'm doing mental arithmetic and going, uh, how many years is 723 days? And uh, yeah, makes good sense. Okay. Yeah, Jennifer, she said those were two different questions. I'm sorry, they they were all <laughs> separate. So I wasn't, I was reading them all as, as one okay. big question. You wanna have another go at it? Feel, uh, Jennifer, feel free to resubmit that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do that so we don't mess it up. Okay, Brutanical Wear said, when searching a keyword in the keyword tool, is, the, is there a way to lock how many keywords are shown on the page from that little drop down so that anytime I do a search, it shows that specific number? I'm assuming when you choose how many uh, it displays. Uh, it should remember what you've got. So if you prefer to see 10 per page or 100 per page, it should remember that. If it's not doing that, then that's a bug and we need to know about it and we'll get that fixed for you right away. All right, let's see. Ch -ch -ch. Um, if you hide a listing on Etsy, is all the data related to that listing invisible also? And then will it refresh as a new listing when it's reactivated? So basically, I'm, I'm assuming you mean you deactivate that listing. It's still the same mm. listing um, yeah. when you deactivate it. It's not a new listing. It's the same yeah. listing. You yeah, it's not a clean slate. There is some historical information that's passed over, but the, uh, the value or the historical value diminishes pretty quickly. So it's like putting your shop on vacation. You know, you come back and it, your sales aren't quite the same uh, for, for you know a short period of time here. Yeah. Yep. Um, Jennifer had also asked, I'd like to turn off my share and save for a bit to test something. Is there a way to do that? That is applied automatically to every Etsy shop. You can stop sharing mm -hmm. your link with people um, and no, you had to opt into it. Did you? I don't think, yeah, the, it was a simple button. I'm vaguely remembering, but I don't see any way to turn it off. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'd be curious to know, Jennifer, why do you want to do that? I'm not being rude. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Yeah. Um, have you heard something? Uh, is, is, is there some downside? I'd, I'd really love to know. Yeah. Let's see. Um... La, 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 la. Scrolling through here. Okay. Um, oh, no, we already answered that. <laughs> we got a lot of people who love the sidekick, so that's awesome. And Jennifer oh, said right. that uh, the hot tool is always her first click, so please don't lose that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Kelly had asked, is there a way to analyze my expired shop items so I can adjust tags and titles prior to renewing the listings? Not at the moment, but we've had um, a lot of people ask, uh, similar to draft listings. It, it's it's like not publicly available yet. So we're going to work on that and see what we can uncover for you so that you can clean it up before you publish it. Yeah. Or reactivate that would it. Be cool. Yeah. All right. Jennifer uh, asked, I like listing statistics. Does it work for ours and competitors? I'm assuming that, that was when we had the sidekick open. Oh, with the sidekick? Yeah, it'll work for any listing on Etsy. But um, if you go and look at your own shop listings, we're not going to show your private data. We're going to show you the estimate as well. 
Um, Sharon had said, could it be that everyone in the U.S. who wants slime now has it? Let me tell you, I'm a slime mom. My kid is obsessed <laughs> with it. That stuff wears out. You don't get to keep it for very long. It gets gross. But the trend isn't as popular. It used to be, you know, all the YouTubers for kids would make videos where they'd be crunching slime and it was like an ASMR thing. It's just not as popular with kids right now. Yeah. yeah, I just use it as a go-to query because I'm really hipping with it. I try yeah. to think they, they're long gone. You need something no, new. It's, it's, it's picking up again. I'm seeing adult YouTubers because people are selling gourmet slime where yeah. you can make food stuff with it and then scrunch all. So, yeah, <laughs> slime's still really a thing. <laughs> Anthony's kept this going for yeah. the whole – this has been his go-to, I think, for the whole time. You've been on the rank pretty much. much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Set in my way. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Sharon said, will the sidekick work with DuckDuckGo? That's a search engine I haven't heard about in a long time. No, no. Uh, at this stage, we're exclusively working with uh, Etsy.com only. Um, but uh, let us know. Again, hit the feedback button if, if you think there is value in providing, uh, you know, some sort of keyword research capabilities for, I haven't thought of DuckDuckGo, but Google or Amazon or eBay or Walmart or anything like that, let us know. If, there, if there's genuine interest and we get enough people requesting it, we'll, we'll give it a, a, a serious go. All right. Um, let's see, where can I find the keywords that I've starred from my previous searches? So the keyword list. In the keyword list. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in those buttons that I was showing earlier, the ones where I sort of think maybe we should remove them someday, keyword list is one of those. So if you click on that, you'll find them in there. Or in your yeah, left or navigation. The, or in your left navigation. Yeah. Keyword research, keyword lists. Yeah, or the little button at the bottom of your screen, which will take True. you directly to that keyword. Yeah, True. Tons of places, because keyword lists are so cool. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Amanda had said that um, that when she sets the amount of data per page that displays that it doesn't remember how many listings she picked per page and spotted on Etsy. Okay, that's a bug as well. So we'll get that looked into as well. Cool. Thank you. And then, I love uh, it. Thank you for letting us know. <laughs> <laughs> Keep doing it. I think we're going to make it. Um, Jennifer uh, had, she was going back, uh, the questions that she had asked previously and then her, the share and save question, they all were interconnected. She said that she believes that it could be the reason that she's not getting seen because she has a lot of fellow uh, creators who use her link to pop in and see what she, what she creates. Um, that should not have any effect on your search placement. Your, your conversion rate does not harm your shop in that way. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if somebody were to search for blue mug and you sell a blue mug and they click on your listing and you know, that you just don't have the blue mug that they want and they click right back off, you can have your conversion rate kind of take a toll, you know, I, I, it can have a negative effect on that particular search query because Etsy's like, oh, well, maybe this isn't a blue mug or maybe people don't like this when they search for a blue mug. But all the, there's a ton of YouTubers who are like, don't share your share and save link. Etsy's <laughs> trying to sabotage you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it doesn't work like that. It, Etsy, look at the keyword. They, they are looking for listings that convert well when people search for that keyword. Uh, if they get there through a social link, through a bookmark, through whatever else, there's no connection to a keyword at all. So, no harm. Yeah, I've I've had this directly from a good person at Etsy. <laughs> I've, I've double checked with them several times for, for many reasons. Um, and if you think about it at the end of the day, Etsy wants new people to come to Etsy they would not penalize you for bringing in new people to see exactly. your stuff. Yep. It would make no sense. Yep. So exactly. yes, don't don't worry about that. Yes, it means when you go into your data in your shop manager, it says your conversion's lower. Doesn't matter. That's, that's not an important number. You can see the important number with um, marketing search analytics beta and you'll see your conversion for the individual keywords. That's the conversion mm -hmm. number that's good. We made it. We did it. We've done questions. Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. All right. All right. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. And Pam Styler, thanks for having me on. Um, I have no other yeah. words of wisdom other than just 
It's good to put it back and, and let Anthony get get bullied by all the questions. It's great fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I enjoy it. <laughs> it's good. Sometimes it's really good to hear directly from people. Absolutely. Right, well, well, thanks, guys. Thanks for hanging out, and I guess we'll see you next week. See you, everyone. Bye. See you.